Okay, so um, this is a, a big project that uh, many people participated. It was led by Xi Ming, uh, and he planned to come, but unfortunately he couldn't in the last minute, so um, I'm giving this presentation. Um, so let me try to motivate this a little bit by skipping to this slide. Yes, okay, so uh, a different group at Intel. Uh, who owns um, FPGA and tools, asked us, uh, us meaning the Intel compiler group, to help with this challenge. And what they have is this. Um, they have uh, autonomous driving uh, uh, suite of applications uh, written in OpenCL targeted for FPGA. And so um, the problem they face is that uh, the development cycle is, is very long, uh, meaning that it takes a, a long time to compile, so they, they, they change one or two lines in the code and it takes a very long time to compile for FPGA because of the nature of uh, programming FPGA, that, that is very time consuming. Um, so they want to be more productive for their developers, um, uh, so they have uh, try, well, if they uh, target at the uh, uh, CPU, then the compilation will be much faster. The problem is that um, a direct um, port, or maybe not even port, just, just uh, retargeting of the original application written on OpenCL to run on the CPU, which would be this second um, arrow, that path is uh, created code that runs very slowly. So the, the original code that runs on FPGA is maybe 50x or 100x faster than their emulation on the CPU. So that is, again, not acceptable. So they want something that is quick to compile, but also um, resulting in an uh, emulation that takes advantage of the CPU architecture, all the, all the threads, or the vector units, so that it, the, uh, the emulation runs reasonably fast. So the constraints they, they, they um, the, the challenge faces is that it's, it's okay to be maybe 5x or maybe even 10x um, the, the, the in, in terms of their uh, um, runtime uh, over the real FPGA run, but 50x or 100x is, is a no-no. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then uh, another thing, we can change the compiler, we can change the tool, uh, I mean the application, but we're not allowed to make very big changes. So we, they're not okay with us writing if def and then re-optimizing the, the entire um, routines, uh, that, that is a no. So uh, we have to do this by maybe instrumenting their, um, their, their original OpenCL programs with, with pragmas, directives, that kind of things. That, that is okay for, with them. And also we were given just a few months to work on this. So that, that was the challenge. And uh, with that, let me go back to the previous slides. Okay, so uh, most of this talk would be uh, about how we uh, change this, this OpenCL uh, applications using OpenMP. So given the constraints that I previously mentioned, 
OpenAP came out to be kind of the ideal um, method to approach this problem uh, because it doesn't require gross changes to original application and uh, it could give us the the um, I, I, it could give us uh, the, the opportunity to take advantage of the CPU architectures by using OpenMP um, parallelization, vectorization, um, and tasking, and those those things. So most of the talk will be about uh, how we change the, the application, and then part of the talk, uh, a smaller portion, will be about how we uh, extended the original OpenCL compiler with. Uh, to, to give it the capability to to uh, produce OpenMP, and uh, that, it's a, that's a smaller portion of this presentation. But we have a paper uh, presented to the LLVM FPC um, uh, meetings in in, in that um, in in that uh, aspect. So we, if you're interested, you can look at that paper uh, later. And then the last part of this presentation is we're going to look at a real uh, case, uh, case study of this, this uh, application and, and see the actual results. Okay, so first let's look at how we um, uh, change this, this uh, applications to, to meet this challenge to take advantage of uh, the threading and the, the vectorization in the FPGA um, uh, application. So the application looks like this. It's basically a pipeline of n stages, and each, in each stage of the pipeline, I'm, look, I'm looking at the, the upper diagram. In each application of the pipeline, you have a single thread working on some, some kernel, and then uh, the, each, each stage of the pipeline it, it will use a, what they call a um, channel to, to pass the data to the next stage. And uh, it's very fine-grained. So each, each data you can think of as a scalar or maybe just a pixel and so forth. So what we want to do is for, because this N stages, um, the N is not very big and it is definitely uh, much smaller than the number of um, uh, cores or, or um, uh, logical threads that, uh, say, a Skylake node has. So, it's not even if we parallelize with, with this pipeline, the, you won't get much um, out of the CPU. So, what we want is to, uh, is for some, depending on which kernel, we'll first identify the ones that are more like the bottlenecks, and then some of them will be vectorized like uh, this one on the right. Some will be, uh, uh, some will be paralyzed, and then some will be both paralyzed and vectorized. And some will be left untouched. But all of them, uh, you see that the, the channel, the pipeline, uh, these channels will have to be uh, extended to uh, more, most of the time it's basically the vector length. So it's now passing instead of a scalar, it's, it's passing vectors from stage to stage. Okay, we saw this. So the first thing uh, we did is to choose a subset of OpenMP that was needed for this work based on uh, after analyzing the, the stages and see what could uh, best uh, take advantage of, of, of the architecture. So these are basically the directives and uh, the runtime functions that uh, we saw we needed to implement on, uh, on this OpenCO compiler. And then with that implementation, then we can uh, instrument the application with these directives and clauses. So uh, this end up to be the subset that we chose to implement. And uh, so you see that we have this traditional work sharing parallel for and so forth. We also have the uh, more, um, the, the newer uh, 
directives like the Cindy's and the task use. Uh, clauses are pretty standard, the data sharing clauses with nothing fancy, and a few of the vectorization clauses. Okay, this is just a simple way to say uh, that uh, the box, the gray box at the right is basically a pipeline stage, and the master thread is your the original only thread that uh, did the kernel, and then uh, by Adding OpenMP, we can, in this diagram, we're representing parallelism, uh, nested parallelism even, right? You have three, and then you have nine, and then back to three, and so forth. So this is just a representation of what happens with threads. And as I said, the original number of stages in the pipeline is, is uh, much, num much smaller than the actual threads that you have in uh, Skylake node. So there are many threads lying around that were not being used. So this is what we want to use them for. Okay, and then, so this is an example of what, uh, what we do to a kernel, for example. The, the, the first line here is an open CL um, line that will tell to use just one thread. So that, that will be the master thread for us. Then uh, this function is an example of, I think it's a dot product. So all we add is this open, OMP parallel for CMD reduction to compute the dot product, right? And then, uh, so the first, uh, the top diagram here is basically represents the, the number of iterations of this, uh, uh, of this loop and um, so the, the parallel four will partition the uh, iteration space in multiple threads and then the CMD will vectorize each thread. Okay, so this is just a very high level representation. And uh, so in, in this way we can um, take advantage of, of Skylake's architecture um, features and uh, hopefully provide a speed up. So, um, okay, so uh, to vectorize um, loops, uh, this is basically, you use your standard OMP CMD, and uh, the uh, clauses that we've used, uh, we've used uh, CMD link, uh, safe link, um, the, uh, uh, the linear clauses, the reductions, and also all the clause to specify alignment. Those are typical um, uh, clauses that you use when you use CMD. And here is an example of, say, how do we, how do we instrument this uh, loop that has uh, backward dependence? So you see, AI is depending on I minus M. So uh, basically, um, well, what we know is uh, if, say, uh, basically this is uh, safe if you, uh, the dependence, the safe length that you choose for the vector is uh, smaller than the dependence distance. So the dependence distance here is M. So if, if uh, you know that M is 6, 17 or larger, then 16 as a safe length is, is okay. So you can do this to uh, vectorize, so you don't need to be blocked by this uh, backward dependence. So you can still vectorize this safely. And uh, the, the another um, thing we needed to do is, if you look at this loop, uh, you have function calls in it. You have a min and you have this Q. So when we say pragma, for CMD, uh, you need to also declare these routines as um, with declare CMD, so that the compiler can automatically generate a vector version of those. So here, the mean and the disk queue, you have to add the red code above, declare CMD, so the compiler will emit the mean vector version and a disk vector version. So the actual 
code for this loop, then you have a vector d equals and then the uh, vector versions of these functions are called. Okay, so that's what will happen, uh, by, uh, will be automatically done by the compiler if you do those instrumented code. And then this is what uh, function vectorization, basically that declares in the what, what it will do. So uh, when you say declare in the to say uh, scalar foo, uh, scalar foo has some, um, uh, in, in here it say each scalar foo will produce one value, right? So in the uh, declare in the, what it will do is Say you're generating um, a vector of four floats. So in here, you will pack four calls to S2 uh, and re return the result in a vector. So this this is the this diagram basically represents that. So your vec foo will return four floats each time. So that will be your, your vector. Um, now, if you have uh, math library calls such as uh, sine, cosine, and uh, floors, max, mean, that, those, those sort of things, uh, Intel provides uh, the SVML, small vector math libraries, that has the vector versions. So it, it's um, uh, the transformation in that case. Uh, it's much, um, we, the, the compiler doesn't have to recreate uh, the, the, the packing of scalar into a vector, but just uh, call, sorry, just call the, um, the vector versions of it in the library, which is, are optimized. So the, the instrumentation is basically, uh, in, in, in the compiler, in the LLVM, they will uh, basically change it to some uh, intrinsic name for the vector version. In this case, instead of uh, sine f, it becomes, it becomes this. And uh, the, the actual uh, code generated will choose the right uh, library function for that vector. Okay, and uh, and then as part of uh, tuning, we also found that um, there is a need to specify what target uh, uh, processor in this case uh, to to generate code for. And the, what happens is this: um, basically, there is. Um, there's a trade-off between what uh, architectures, what ve in this case, what um, uh, say vector architecture you want to support. You want to support uh, YMM, ZMM, or just the the, the traditional SSE. Uh, so there's a trade-off between between the, um, that. Meaning uh, the basic performance, right, and, and flexibility. What uh, because the OpenMP doesn't know what the, the target, um, what, what vector units the target uh, processor has for the, when, when the program actually runs on, on some machine. So uh, then the the trade-off is the code size versus. Um, uh, these uh, performance. So GCC's approach, I understand, is to basically just uh, produce a fat binary with multi-versioning. I think there's uh, basically two versions for XS XMM, two because there's a mask and a mask version of the vector code, uh, two for YMM, two for ZMM, and, and, and just so, so that the, the, the compiled code will run well on any uh, machine that you throw it at. Uh, I think uh, original Intel's um, compiler is, is more conservative. It doesn't want to generate a, a very fast code, so you only, it has fewer versions. But eventually we thought that uh, it would be a good idea to 
be able to specify what processor so we can so if you know that you only want to run the targeted code at uh, that processor then uh, you don't have to generate fat binaries and uh, you can still have good performance so so for this uh, particular project we are also implemented this uh, this uh, clause that is not part of OpenMT, and these are uh, in, in that implementation. These are the, the different names that the clause can accept. Some are uh, these future CPUs. We haven't decided a name for it because we don't get to choose those names. So we just use some placeholders there. So, for example, Kennel, um, Broadwell. We, we still don't have a, a good name for it. Yes. Yes. Oh, those are, those are different. Uh, that so this is for um, in in uh, when you choose the minus like x a v x two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those are more for. Um, Compatibility, but in in OpenMP, the the problem is uh, you, when when you compile with um, with, with without those flags, um, you still need to be able to support different things. So you 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 cannot just rely on that. Yeah. yeah so so um, yes, if you if you had those, then you could claim that you don't need this, but uh, often we cannot just uh, have yeah, so it's it's much um, uh, more direct to have uh, this kind of control within OpenMP. Okay, so then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the, so up to now I've talked about changing to the application. Now it's changing to the compiler and. Uh, OpenCL uh, compiler was uh, the the code base was on LLVM. I think it was 3.8 or 4.0 at, at the time. Uh, so what we added is um, we wanted to support uh, OpenMP, uh, and we wanted to be able to do the um, uh, the the code transformations, the the, the lowering, OpenMP lowering and uh, outlining and those things uh, in the middle end. Hopefully, that will allow for more optimizations and has a better integration with the other classes in OpenMP. So, uh, the first thing is uh, we needed our front end, uh, the Clang front end, to generate a set of uh, IRs that we defined based on directives. And that is just a small set of um, additions to basically a couple of intrinsics that we added to represent the directives, begin and end. And then the mechanism will allow, you, allow us to represent directives and clauses and, and so forth in this IR. Um, and it's nicely integrated into the existing framework in LLVM. Then, the, so because that is a uh, small, small um, change so it is not disruptive. It, it has a very minimal impact on on the LLVM infrastructure. Then based on those directives then we can uh, generate uh, our uh, representation of, of the parallel regions or, or um, uh, d different constructs for OpenMP in a unified way so we can support parallelization, vectorization, or floating, everything using the same uh, framework, the same region representation. And uh, then we can optimize the code uh, by doing the transformations in the middle end, uh, producing OpenMP code, or floating, uh, the, the, the outlining part for uploading, for uh, threading, and so forth. So uh, this is a diagram summarizing uh, the changes to LLVM. Uh, before, uh, so on the left is um, 
what happens to uh, polarization and on the right is for vectorization and they're very similar so before this dotted line is basically um, what uh, what we do before um, the the actual uh, code changes so it's, it's basically uh, just the IR out of the front end with those directives and with some pre-processing okay and then the the bulk of the transformations for OpenMP is uh, construction the graph what we call the W region graph is, is an abstraction to capture the, the, the regions, the constructs in OpenMP and then produce the uh, privatization renaming uh, then the loop partition to, to uh, schedule the, the loops and then uh, the multi thread code so that, that is basically outlining and uh, calling the the libraries. Okay, so similarly for vectorization, uh, the changes are also before the dollar line is your uh, the, the IR representation with some preprocessing. Then the representation that is the same W region uh, that represents those uh, uh, regions. Then there's another uh, layer called V plan that uh, is uh, slightly lower than the uh, W regions but represent the vectorization um, uh, code much better and then with that then we can generate a uh, vector code. So th these are things that are done to the LLVM side of things and uh, as I said earlier there, uh, there's a paper about that in uh, the uh, LLVM uh, conference. So now we can go to some uh, a case study of some results. For this particular workload called Grid Fusion, uh, basically we achieve 35x beta compared to the, the just the pipeline uh, version of it. So um, things that were done for Grid Fusion. Uh, we have CMD loop vectorization, and again the the channel read write is is uh, uh, exp you know extended to vector, but the old order is preserved. Uh, and all the scalar the array expansion that is done uh, by the compiler for vectorization. Then we had to do some strip mining uh, distribution expansion for some of the loops uh, when they involve class types. Uh, and then vector length we chose based on which architecture we wanted to do. So this is back, this goes back to that processor uh, uh, <coughs> clause that, that I mentioned earlier. Then the, um, we for vectorization then we also specify the single length that we needed. Um, and then the user functions that are involved in vector loops, then they have to be uh, declared CMD so that the compiler can generate a vector version of it. And for the library, uh, you don't need to do that because the, the compiler already knows that they have a sign because all those math libraries, then the compiler can already do that automatically. Um, uh, then the last one is the yeah the again the uh, uh, ch the channel read write this is the the uh, the channel in the pipeline uh, they are uh, also expanded for uh, to support the vectorization I think that's this is earlier this is the 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 width is is expanded to a vector. Just an example of what uh, 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 one of the main loops in Grid Fusion, how the way you vectorize them. So, Promo and PCMD choose a CMD length of 16. Then the, 
the accumulator occupy input and the, the, this this uh, this ball face blue line here is the channel um, uh, input and output. So that is also expanded to vector. Then these routine names in purple, those are um, function use basically uh, routines in the application that we needed to declare SIMD to produce the uh, vector version of those functions. So that's an example of what how we instrument the vectorization. This is one with parallelization. Uh, actually, I see both. There's SIMD here, but uh, the parallelization of the loop is here. So we have a parallel four with a bunch of reductions. And uh, so this, did I say speed up? No, no speed up. Yet. So for this, uh, the speed up was four, you know, four point five x. That's pretty good, just by adding a few lines. Um, and this part uh, is also uh, vectorization. Uh, wait, skip. Yeah. So we added the CMD uh, line there. Again, the channel in and out are vector. So this part produced almost 6x just by adding these lines. Um, and then this is another hot function there. Uh, declare. Oh, actually, these are just a declare thing that uh, accompany the previous slide. So the, the functions that need, that appear in the vector loops. So uh, we added the declare func declare thing these so that the compiler will automatically generate the function versions. So this is a summar summary slide of the performance. Uh, let's look at the bottom uh, line. So basically the, the, the total time that it takes for one um, computation in the pipeline is basically, uh, of course the bottleneck is the, the, the stage that takes the longest time, that, that would be your bottleneck. So it's the max of the times of each stage and then that you have to add the time to communicate. So the, the channel, um, the, the, the communication from one stage to the next, which is called the, the, uh, the channel, the time of that channel. So in, the, in, in this application, the uh, channel overhead is quite big, it's like 8 milliseconds. And uh, after all our um, uh, optimizations, we w managed to make the the max of any of those stages, the, lar the, the stage, the slowest stage, to be bounded at about five milliseconds. So it takes uh, for, for one computation uh, of, of uh, say a frame or whatever whatever unit that is, it then takes about 13. 13, uh, 5 plus 8, right? It's about 13 milliseconds. So that's what this 13 millisecond is. So originally, the 450 is the, um, the time of the uh, the, the OpenCL uh, uh, application that was targeted at the CPU that is only, um, is it, not optimized w w with any of these OpenMP uh, uh, directives, but it's optimized only for the pipeline um, uh, parallelism. So that is, that is this. Okay, and uh, then there was uh, also some experiments. If we take away the, okay, uh, if we look at three hot um, kernels, uh, here we chose them, and then the the actual speed up for those particular kernels were from actually th these are the ones that we saw in previous slides, like the almost the six x and the four point five x on in those kernels. And if you take away the uh, channels, the the cost of the the time of the channel, uh, then they be become much higher. So, and the meaning of this is that in the actual FPGA run, the the channel cost is negligible as opposed to the emulation. So, 
So uh, basically, this is the the raw uh, gain by using OpenMP. Yes. Uh, oh, for no, no, for for these uh, each each of the kernels, we can choose how many threads we want to use. So, like for some of those, we chose to use 16 threads. Okay, so yeah. Yes, yes, it, it, it varies from kernel to kernel. So because basically, say, uh, I don't know, we have 50 some threads in the Sky Lake, mm -hmm. and uh, minus the n threads that are used by the pipeline, so we have that many threads left that we can kind of accommodate how we want to distribute. So each stage can choose different number of threads. Mm -hmm. So, in conclusion, um, we uh, basically optimize some uh, an autonomous uh, driving application applications uh, using OpenMP, so that we can take advantage of the architectural um, uh, features of CPUs. And uh, to do that, we basically change the application by adding this. Uh, directives, and we also change the compiler by uh, providing capabilities to have OpenCL and OpenMP be uh, both supported. And so, um, of course, there is no uh, one-size-fits-all solution that will satisfy all programmers or all applications. So we have to do this hybrid thing, and uh, no free lunch, of course. Um, you have to, uh, you know, try to uh, extract the most out of your uh, uh, architectures by using all these different strategies, and you have to need to combine different paradigms just to uh, uh, work with the FPGA, with the CPUs, with GPUs, and so forth. Uh, and uh, we believe that. Um, the hardware and the applications that are, you know, changing rapidly, they, they will drive what kind of uh, programming models, uh, language, and compilers are needed. And so, and in, in this case, uh, in our experiment, we kind of used an incremental approach because we, first of all, we didn't have the time to re-implement everything, so we just, we only have a, a few months, so we, we basically just quickly added some things that we already know how to do into an existing uh, compiler. And then so it is incremental approach actually, uh, at least in, in, in this case, it, it works for us. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.